we have an entire subculture of video game streaming and art alleys that perpetuate infringement all the time. Is it all just a game of risk? Stay small and off so you never get targeted? Yeah. I mean, that's the funny thing though. Like you're saying, because People rarely think that way. They're like, oh, I'm going to make a whole bunch of stuff because I want to be big and famous. And I know everybody is just super sweaty over a Starian right now, or in our circle at the convention, Carlac. You know, we're going to do a whole bunch of Baldur's Gate 3 stuff. And they're doing it specifically because they're like, hey, these are really popular characters, and I'm here to make money. And I like this content myself, so I want to share the experiences and find those other sweaty Baldur's Gate 3 players, you know? And so very much from a fundamental aspect, a lot of that is like, hey, I want to take the goodwill that the people, the developers behind Baldur's Gate have put into it. So, I mean, yeah, it really is like, I want to infringe on the rights uh if if you can find it you know sometimes they're just like oh no i just like this content but you gotta ask okay but then why are you commercializing uh, your interest in the content that's also putting things from this perspective of the people who own the ip have a natural right to do it which is definitely that conversation of is it utilitarian you get what you can until the value, the value, you know, passes off to society. Um, and then you just kind of like lose that exclusivity. But yeah, patents have, have not been expanding at the same rate uh, in length of time, such as copyrights and things, which is, I guess, all the more power to them for maintaining that exclusivity, but for a limited duration. And so, you know, we have to wonder all the lobbying from Disney and, you know, the Mickey fan club, like how much of that really is good now, long-term? Like if we also just limited the time if we knocked off the CTA, CTEA, you take your time and plan things out and make sure that you are set no, up. no, we're not doing with any type of audio songs, um, or lyric based music. There we go. But yeah, so like, I don't know, is one of the overhauls just gutting the length of time and just saying, Hey, Disney, you've really messed this up for everyone. And we really just need to have fan-based content. Maybe that's part of the change too. Obviously, there's a really big logistical nightmare to messing around with There's a logistical nightmare to doing any big overhaul of the copyright system because for better or worse, people have been relying on it. And so, yeah, if there's gonna be a big change, there's absolutely gonna need to be notice and a transition period so that everybody can get their contracts and things in order. Which, fortunately, that's what happened with D&D 1. And, um, you know, it got walked back quite a bit before the policy really hit. But yeah, this is nerdy law stuff about copyright law. 